Hi everyone, this is Josh for TechZone UK, and in this video we're going to be creating, uh, or series of videos, sorry, we're going to be creating our own web server, which is going to be our main PC, and then we're going to be installing WordPress onto it. reason for that is because there's so many people that want to, you know, get to learn the basics of creating a web host, and install WordPress so that we can get a fully functional um, WordPress website going. So this is going to be a sort of set up your own website series. Now one thing you should know about this is that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be hosting the WordPress website on our own machine which isn't very good security wise for your own network. It's only really good if you want to learn how WordPress works, how you can set up your own blog but ideally if you want to be able to tell friends and family about your blog uh, and things like that it's highly recommended that you pay for a web host. Now I say pay, I mean, you know, they're cheap as chips. You can get some free ones, uh, which give you free domains, uh, which I'll show you in the next few videos, I guess. Uh, but you also get a paid one, and I mean, you can set up your own website for a one-off payment of about £8, uh, maybe for two years for a domain name, so it could be yourwebsite.com, which costs about eight, eight or nine pounds. And then for web hosting, it's like $4.99 uh, a month. So it's incredibly cheap to have your own website going. So, um you know, in this video, like I said, we're going to be looking at creating our own or using our own machine to host the WordPress so we can learn how to install WordPress. And then once we've installed WordPress, I'm going to show you how to use all the features, you know, plugins, widgets, menus, um, content management, all this sort of stuff. And then after that, I'll finally show you how you can set up your own WordPress website um, using a proper web host such as GoDaddy or FastHost or HostGator or something like that. So, there's two things we're going to need for this video, and the first one is the XAMPP installer. Now, XAMPP, it stands for X Apache MySQL PHP, I think. Uh, <laughs> um, basically, it allows us to run a MySQL um, database on our machine, which will hold all our content for our WordPress website, and it will allow us to run an Apache server, which is pretty much the web server. Now, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do everything in this video. It's very, very simple. Just follow along, and it's not going to take us very long either. So, like I said, to get these two files, easiest way is to click the link in the description. I'll have like file number one, file number two. And what we're going to do first is head over to wordpress.org forward slash download and just download the WordPress file. Click on that. It takes you to this page and click on download WordPress and then the current version. Now, mine's 3.8.1. Yours might be higher. I doubt it would be lower. Otherwise, they're doing something wrong somewhere. Um, basically, just click on that and download the file. Next thing you need is, like I said, Apache, which is our uh, web server. So head over to our website, uh, our website. Uh, head over to the website ApacheFriends.org. Again, the link will be in the description, so you can download it and just probably download the latest version, which is uh, version 1.8.3 and PHP 5.5. So click download. It's quite a big installer. I think it's about 80 or 90 meg. Um, so it's not huge, but you know, you just have to download it. So. Now we should have both files on our desktop. We should have the WordPress files, which will inside will look something like this. There we go. And we will have our Apache installer. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install Apache, which is our XAMP, and then we're going to install the WordPress website. So obviously we need to get our server up and running first uh, before we can actually um, you know, create our website. So we're going to double click on the installer here for Apache, and if you get the UAC, we're just going to hit yes. And uh, when this loads, Hopefully, it says uh, Bitnami. However, you want to pronounce that. It says here because we've got UAC enabled, it's going to have problems here. But we're just going to hit OK. I've never run into any problems with it, but you know, you never know. So here we're just going to hit uh, Next, and we're going to allow it to install all these. A quick rundown: Apache is our web server. MySQL is our database. FileZilla FTP server allows us to connect to our web uh, server via file or program called FileZilla, which is an FTP client, which stands for File Transfer Protocol. Uh, Mercury mail server and Tomcat, which are, well, Mercury is a mail server. Tomcat, I think, is a database, I can't remember. But most importantly, we need PHP and Perl, as well as PHP MyAdmin, which is basically a, because MySQL is literally just a database, it has no GUI or backend. PHP MyAdmin creates that GUI and backend for us, so we have that. Webalizer, I haven't used, and Fake Send Mail, never used before. So I guess you could untick, untick those two if you wanted to, but I keep them ticked just for the your fun of it. So make sure everything's ticked and hit next and it's going to ask whether we want to install XAM. Now best place to have it is in our C drive because if we want to share files in the future it's just easier to access files there so keep it in your C drive there and hit next. And uh, it's saying here learn a bit more about that. I'm just going to uncheck that box and we hit next 
and uh, finally hit next again which should start to install XAMPP onto our machine. Now this can take a while because you know it's a lot of files it all depends on the on the speed of your computer. Now like I said what this will allow us to do is install uh, Apache which is our web server, MySQL which is our database and PHP well that's just part of the, the Apache server that will allow us to read the HTML files uh, allow us to read the HTML files, it will allow us to read the PHP files um, so obviously once you've got both things downloading you know down, run the XAMPP installer and then what we're going to do now once this is finished installing is we're going to look at installing WordPress onto the Apache server. Now don't worry it's a really really simple process uh, it's really not hard to do uh, all we have to do is create a new database uh, using PHP my admin which is really simple uh, and then what we're going to do is go straight ahead and install WordPress now the funny thing is or the funny it's not really that funny uh, but the interesting thing is, is that when you buy a web host like um, from go host cater or you know pretty much wherever those web hosts already have uh, Apache and PHP and MySQL and all these different things running so you don't even, you don't even need to have to worry about installing uh, XAMPP because uh, all the services are there it's literally just a case then of creating a database and dragging and uploading the WordPress files or even in some cases I know that a company called Fast Host and Hosting24 both have it um, they have a system um, where um, you can literally uh, go onto something called a one-click installer. You go on their menu, you find what blog you want to install, whether you can install things like Joomla, um, Dru uh, Drupal, and various other s content management systems. Uh, and you can click install, and it will create a database for you automatically. It will do loads of stuff for you. So hopefully I'll be able to show you in the future on how to do it. Uh, but it looks like XAMPP is nearly done for us. So hopefully it doesn't uh, take too uh, much longer. Come on, XAMPP, you can do it. Now, a uh, quick heads up. If you're installing XAMPP, uh, make sure you turn off things like Skype and um, other applications because Skype, surprisingly, has similar ports to what the Apache server uses. So uh, there can sometimes be conflicts with the ports and services won't start up. So best idea is to reboot your machine, turn off anything you don't need, uh, and then turn on Apache which I'll show you how to do in a second. So uh, here we go, look, Apache or XAMPP is now uh, finished. So what we're going to do is we're just going to load up the control panel by making sure this tick box here is ticked. And we're going to hit finish. And now we're greeted with this really nice window here that allows us to start certain modules. So we're going to install or start the Apache module and we're going to install the MySQL module. Simple as that. Okay, so we're going to test to see if the Apache module works. We can do this by going into Internet Explorer and going to the website oh, if I get the keyboard right on my microphone in front of me, can't barely see uh, localhost and you'll see here, look, we have the XAMPP website so we can hit English but you'll notice this is on localhost, meaning it's on our own system and what we can do is, you know we installed Apache to our C drive if we go to our C drive here, go to my computer then C drive and then go to our XAMPP and there's a folder called htdocs just here and you can see all these files here are pretty much what we're viewing here. So you'll see if we delete all these, which we can do because we don't need them, just delete all those and we re refresh the page. Yeah, page isn't there anymore. We just deleted everything. So what we can do is go back to localhost. It should look like this, which is very, very good. So keep open this htdocs uh, window and what we're going to do now is it's time to install WordPress. So we're going to double click on the WordPress folder, double click into the WordPress folder again and we're going to drag over all the files in this WordPress site into our htdocs root folder. And whilst it's doing that, just copying over, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our XAMPP control panel and you can see it says MySQL. There's a button called Admin. I'm going to click on that and this will load PHP My Admin, which is what we want. Uh, turn off. So what we want to do now is we want to create a new database. Basically in WordPress, data, uh, WordPress uses databases for um, managing all the content because all the content that you use in WordPress, like when you go into the what's called the WYSIWYG, which is what you see is what you get, editor, uh, it saves all that content onto uh, the database so that when you load WordPress sites, your data is being pulled from the database. That's where it stores the information. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit databases at the top and we're going to create a new database and we're just going to simply call uh, this database WordPress. Simple as that. I'm going to hit create. 
and now we have a database called WordPress. Now that's all we needed to do, we just needed to create a database. We don't need to add any tables, WordPress inserts all the tables for us automatically, so we don't even have to come close to creating anything like that. So now what we can do is come to our htdocs folder and we should have all our WordPress files in there. So we can just close out of the uh, zip folder that we downloaded here. So we're just left with our xamp htdocs window open. So now what we need to do is go back to our local host page and just refresh the page or search again. And you'll see it says here that there doesn't seem to be a WP config file. That's obviously because we haven't created one. So all we're going to do is we're going to click create a configuration file. And this is basically where we're going to set up all our database information. So we're going to simply just click on let's go. And we created our database before and I made it WordPress for a reason so obviously we don't have to change it. And now for MySQL the default username is root. Uh, and the default password is, well, nothing. It's very secure, I know. However, obviously, if you want to create a user, you can, but creating users, you then have to edit permissions and things like that. So if you're creating something on your local machine and you're just doing it for testing purposes, just don't worry about having the password. If you're obviously hosting your website using a professional company, like you know, like I mentioned before, Hosting24, GoDaddy, HostGator, things like that, then um, obviously make sure you have passwords on your databases. Now uh, we can keep all this uh, pretty much as default at the bottom here, localhost, which points back to our local machine as our database, because remember we're running MySQL. And then we've got our table prefix, which is just WP underscore. This would change if we install a new blog. It's basically so that when if we did install a new Word, uh, WordPress blog, it would be, be able to identify the two different blogs. Because what you can do is you can actually have multiple blogs running off the same database, so it pulls all the same data. Um, so what we can do is we can just hit uh, hit submit and as you can see here it says alright Sparky you made it through this part of the installation WordPress can now communicate with your database if you're ready to, uh, if you are ready time uh, time now to run the install so we're gonna hit on run the install and here we are it's gonna give us some options so uh, it says welcome to the famous five minute WordPress installation process you may want to browse the readme documentation at your leisure otherwise just fill in the information below and you'll be on the way to using the most expandable and powerful personal publishing platform in the world and I'll tell you what that's that's last sentence there probably is true because so many different people businesses uh, run uh, WordPress I mean my personal businesses um, website is on WordPress um, so site title I'm gonna call this uh, tech zone UK blog okay and I'll keep the username as admin this is what we're gonna be using to log into our backend and I'm gonna create the password as something really simple like um, surprisingly it says the password password one two three with a capital P is secure don't know why uh, and then it's gonna ask for our email now I'm just gonna put um, Josh at tech zone uk.com now I haven't even got that website however here's the thing when you enter your email address here you're not, you're not signing up for newsletters you're not signing up for spam you're not signing up for anything what you're signing up for is that if you forget your administrator password you can recover it by being sent to that email uh, email address there so make sure that if you do um, when you enter this email is a, a valid email otherwise if you forget your password um, you're not going to be able to get in so here we have one button at the bottom that says allow search engines to index this site. This basically says do you want Google to be able to see your site and put it onto Google. So if it's checked it will, if it's checked they won't be able to put it onto Google. So uh, now what we do is we hit install WordPress. Give it a second and there we go. WordPress is now being installed onto our machine. <laughs> Were you expecting more steps? Sorry to disappoint but let's click on login. And now what we can do is we can finally log in to our WordPress website by using the password or using our admin and then the password that we set up a minute ago and hit login. And here we are. We are now into our new WordPress dashboard for the first time, which is awesome. And what we can do now is you know we can create posts, we can create loads of different things. So I'm going to finish the video here. So now we've installed WordPress. In the next video, we're going to be installing a theme onto our website um, where we can, I'll show you different locations where you can get free themes and a location where you can get paid themes. So we're going to get be getting both of them. And last thing I'll leave with you with here is that we need to update WordPress if you haven't. So click on please update now. And uh, we're going to hit on uh, update now.
and this will then update to the latest version of WordPress. So, like I said, I'm going to finish the video now, so thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you found it helpful. I'm sorry if some parts I did speak a little bit quick, um, I'm just trying to get through it because there obviously was a lot of information to cover. Now remember, you will not be able to access your website unless you have XAMPP running with the Apache and MySQL modules. So obviously uh, make sure they're running when you try and access your website. So that's pretty much it. Obviously I've had a problem here with, um, uh, with downloading. I think my internet might have cut out with having a horrible storm outside. I'm not sure if you can hear it or not. But uh, yeah, the um, there's a very horrible storm. So I'm not sure if my internet's dropped, but hey-ho. So like I said, in the next video, we're going to be looking at uh, installing themes. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe. If you want to see more, if you, or if you're having, well, if you want to see more, subscribe. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, then give it a like. And if you want to ask any questions about your WordPress installation, or if you're getting any errors or things like that, by all means, drop a comment. And if you have used WordPress in the past and you see someone's comment, um, you know, uh, with someone having a problem, by all, try and answer it, see if you can, and obviously um, that would be awesome if you do. Um, but apart from that, that's how you install WordPress using XAMPP onto your own um, website machine or web host, I guess. So uh, like I said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.